welcome back. So um, I hope you guys liked that new intro. I have been working on it for about a year now. It seems kind of a long time, but I kind of put it on the back burner for a while. I had got some drone footage of San Francisco and I was just waiting to try to find the music that I wanted to set it to. I did preview it on my Instagram. Um, you know, a lot of you guys gave me great feedback and a lot of you guys told me that it was too long or that you liked the old music. I'm somebody that is constantly changing my hair, my nails, just everything up. I get bored easily. So for me, change is good. I know not everybody's necessarily comfortable with it, but if you do like that old song, it was by CMA and it is a royalty free song. I will link it below so you guys can download the entire song and listen to it at your leisure. And I do know that, you know, a 25 second intro is rather long, but I've got to do things that I enjoy as well. And I love my city and it's something I really take pride in and I think it's beautiful. So I really wanted to incorporate things that I love into my channel as well. If the long intro bothers you, you can always skip ahead 25 seconds because no offense, I'm not gonna change it. I have to do stuff that I like as well. I actually found this song because Keegan was down in LA at Warped Tour this year. And when he came back, he typically will have like a playlist set of like new music that he discovered while he was down there. And th the song came on and I shazammed it from my office while he was listening to it in the living room. And I really liked it and I was playing it. And I know that he had interviewed them for his site. And so I just said, hey, is there any chance that we could like license this for my video intro? Anyway, they're a band out of the UK and their name is Sykes. And they went around on Warped Tour this year. The song is called Gold Dust and I will link it it down below. I'll have it linked in every video so you guys can click and download it from there. Or you guys can always go check out their YouTube channel too if you want to see other songs. There is a music video for this song. Moving on. Today is the highly requested review of the Juvia's Place eyeshadows. As always, you know I like to talk. There will be markers in the description box if you want to just skip ahead to swatches and I will put timestamps next to each palette so if you're just interested in one you can go back for easy reference. I will do a price comparison breakdown and briefly at the end I will address some drama um, because you guys have asked me and I'll just give you my take on it for whatever that's worth. I did purchase all three of these palettes myself. I did not use a discount code because at the time I wasn't aware that there was one um, and I did purchase them in three separate transactions just so I could see the customer service because something I'll touch on and the drama part of this video um, was regarding um, occasionally a couple people have reported that they've had um, slow shipping times. So I just wanted to give this a fair shake. So I did pay shipping all three times. Well, the first palette I bought that really caught my eye was this Nubian 2 palette. This is actually my favorite one out of the three as well. I went on and I ordered this Masquerade palette next. And then the last one I got because it was actually out of stock was this the original Nubian palette. So I'm not gonna lie, I had never heard of this brand prior to you guys requesting that I review it because there are so many makeup brands that pop up and so many indie brands and so many kind of like lackluster indie brands. So it's kind of like sometimes I almost feel like I have blinders on to like the main brands that are in like Sephora, Ulta's, yada yada. I'm always up to try new things. I try to accommodate those review requests as I can. So I do believe that Juvia's Place has online stockists in some different countries. I am not aware of them being carried in any certain stores yet. They aren't available in any stores around me. Um, I did just purchase these online. Juvia's Place has really blown up uh, in recent weeks here. Very large YouTubers such as Nikki Tutorials and Jaclyn Hill have been talking about their products and you guys know they have like the Midas Touch, whatever they talk about typically sells out. So the palettes have gotten larger over time. This, the Nubian palette was their first. This Nubian 2 palette was their second and then the Masquerade is their most recent one. So you can see just size wise, they've gotten larger. This Nubian palette, you're getting 18 grams. This Nubian 2, you're getting 45 grams. And then the Masquerade, you're getting 57.6 grams, which that's a lot of product. I follow a makeup artist on Instagram and her handle is Makeup by Aloe. Her name is Aloe. And I know that she has a code with them. Um, she's an affiliate with them. So if you use her code, which is A-L-O at checkout, you guys can get, I think it's like roughly it works out to like 10% off, a little less than 10% off. Nikki Tutorials has a code too. You use 
use that. Prices come down to $21.25, $27, and then $29.25. Shipping goes out of USPS and it is a flat rate of $5.95. So I did pay that all three times just to check on how their shipping was. Now for some shipping information. Uh, the first palette I ordered was the Nubian 2. I ordered it on July 31st. On August 2nd, I got a shipping notification and it was delivered by USPS on August 4th. The second palette I ordered was the Masquerade. I ordered that on August 6th. On August 7th, I got a shipping notification and it was delivered by the USPS on August 10th. And then the last palette I ordered was the original Nubian palette. I ordered that on August 9th. I got a shipping notification on August 11th and it was delivered by the USPS on August 13th. And I do just want you guys to know that when I do order, I order from my personal email address and it comes to my home. So there is no way that anybody would know that I do YouTube videos or that I would be reporting on that. I order just like everybody else. So I think the best thing to do is go palette by palette, uh, talk about the cost, talk about the cost breakdown, then show the swatches. And then I'll continue on with the other two like that as well. So their first release was this Nubian palette. And out of the three, this is my least favorite favorite only because I do find um, some of these mattes a little dry to work with and for me like these some of these shimmers like this one is um, more faint and I find the color selection to be uh, very similar. They, they are good shadows but typically if you guys watch me like I like brighter colors so if you like neutrals and warm colors this will be an excellent palette for you. And I just want to read you guys on the back of the box. It says the Nubian palette by Juvia's was inspired by African empire and old Egypt headed by the beauty icon Nefertiti. Famously endowed with strength and spirituality. This palette consists of 12 shades beautifully coordinated to be reflective of golds, coppers, browns, and nudes as seen in the Egyptian empire. So in this palette with 12 shades, you're going to get four mattes and eight shimmers. Something I think is really cool about Julia's Place is this is a black owned makeup brand. And, you know, to me, it, it doesn't matter who owns what, you know, good, good products are good products. The only reason I do mention that is I want to just point out the fact that these are the first palettes in a very long time that I found that are people of color friendly. For me, I mean, these colors, if I go on very lightly, work as my transition. But um, I just think it's nice that you're gonna get a good a good mix of colors that will show up on everybody's skin from us really pale girls all the way down to um, really beautiful deep skin. I am wearing some of the colors on my eyes today. Um, I used this color right here as my transition today. So with 18 grams of product, after you factor in, if you use Aloe's code at checkout, the palette came to 21.25, breaks down to $1.18 per gram in this. Now let's show some of the swatches of this. And as always, I will be swatching in my typical fashion. I've laid down a base of Urban Decay's Primer Potion. I will be swatching the matte shades with my MAC 239 brush, and I will be swatching the shimmers with my MAC 242 brush. I will be cleaning my brush off in between swatches on my color switch so my brush will not be damp. I will do a finger swatch above, and then I will do the brush swatch right below it so you can see the difference. Okay, moving on, let's talk about my favorite palette in this and 
basically the majority of what I'm wearing on my eyes today. The back of this box has the same, uh, very similar description as the first Nubian palette. Out of the 12 shades you get in this palette, four are mattes and eights are shimmers. These shadows are very large. You can even just compare them um, on the size of this. These are like standard Makeup Geek MAC size eyeshadows and these are like the big boys. This palette 45 grams. After that code comes out to $27. And that comes out to 60 cents per gram per eyeshadow, which that is amazing given this quality. You know, a lot of people say that like, oh, Morphe shadows are so great for the price. It's like, I mean, Kind of at that price, I expect rock dust to be, you know, great for that cost. So these really, really impressed me. After I used that one transition color, I went in with um, Morocco, um, higher up this orange color that you see. Um, I went with Jezebel into the crease, and I will tell you that this Jezebel stains my eyes, even with a base. Um, after I take it off, I have a little faint remnants of like a red color, even though it's kind of like purple. Um, but that doesn't bother me because I really do like these shadows. I just want to make you aware. Um, so if I go over it with a little more of like my bioderma and stuff, it will kind of fade it. And by the morning it's gone, but it, it does leave a mark behind on me. Then I went in with this Layla color on the outside and inside of my eye. And then this Ya, I believe is how you say it. This Ya color is all over um, the middle of my eye. And same thing, I, I put it on the bottom here. This is my favorite because I really like these kind of orange and rust colors and these colors combined like those if you guys know me oranges and like a berry or a burgundy any kind of color like that that's my favorite mix and I love green and you have brown this is a really beautiful it's like that deep it's almost like a black purple a really rich purple even though it kind of looks black in this palette it's just it's gorgeous and I will say that I like to use these shimmer shadows best for me with a um, glitter glue base and then to pack it on and I can get a little fallout so I always do my eyes first when I'm using these shimmer shades and then I go on with my foundation which is typically backwards of how I normally do it. Now let's get into the swatches for the Nubian 2 palette. And last but certainly not least, we have the Masquerade palette. So I'm gonna read you the back of the box. It says the Masquerade palette was inspired by festivities usually filled with beautiful and striking colors, enormously captured and celebrated with joy, beauty, vibrancy, and spirituality. 16 richly pigmented colors created and formulated to beautifully elevate your beautiful qualities. So this palette contains five mattes and 11 shimmers or metallics. What I will tell you is if you have a sensitivity to ultramarines or ferric ferrocyanide, um, these palettes, all three of these palettes contain those. Um, I don't have a sensitivity to them and they are very common in like the Urban Decay electric palette and really vibrant colors like this. Um, some people, you, you'll know if you're sensitive to it because you would have had like kind of itchy and watery eyes. Same thing, if you know that you're sensitive to parabens, I would skip on the first palette, the green one. I love this palette as well because I love blues and greens. And again, I'm getting those warm colors like this. Uh, this Calabra, I think is how you say it. I'm sorry if I am butchering any of those names. Um, I really do like this palette as well. My only thing that I ever wish is that I had a few more, a few more matte shades to pair with some of these. Like while I love that you can do like some transitions and really do some crease work, if I wanted to put the blue all over the lid, for me anyway, I would have liked more of like a matte blue as well to kind of work more so to blend that out in the crease. But So I think if you're expecting to do like an entire look for me anyway, and if you wanted to do like all blue, you didn't just want to take on like one of these purple into the crease which still that would be a, 
a beautiful pairing. Um, you will need some more eyeshadows. This palette with the discount code comes out to $29.25. You're getting 57.6 grams of product, which is a lot of product, and that comes out to 51 cents a gram for the 16 shades. So uh, let's get into swatches of the masquerade now. <music> want to touch on the fact that all three of these palettes all do have different formulas as you can see here I did highlight um, a couple ingredients and I'll get into why in a minute but all three of these palettes do have different formulas now I did hear some rumors um, some of you guys were telling me that they were just um, private label Morphe or crown shadows if you've seen my Morphe video um, I touched on the the fact that the same formula was Crown and Morphe. So I did the same thing as you guys. I took the ingredients and I searched them online and I'm not quite sure where you guys are getting that, the ones that have told me that because the only ingredient that is the same in the same order is talc in two of the palettes that I have highlighted there in green. I compared them against the 35 palettes. I also compared them against the 12 pan palettes. I also compared them against their premium individual shadows. Um, and when you guys do that search, it will bring up ingredients that are the same, but they won't necessarily be in the same order or they'll show you products that are similar. They do share several of the same ingredients, which is not uncommon in eyeshadows, but as you can see, they're in a completely different order and some of the shadows have completely different ingredients. So I just wanted to touch on that. These are a much, much better buy. I gotta go call them in the other room. Nice butt. Thanks. Now let's do a little cost comparison here on the screen. I'm going to put up some well-known brands and I'm going to compare the cost for you guys. So to be fair, um, I wanted to compare, you know, apples to apples. So I'm comparing it to the Morphe 35 palettes and also the premium individual palettes as well as the Voss because... Um, all three of those palettes are made in China as well. Then um, just for comparison, I also put up some Makeup Geek and MAC so you can see what the cost per shadow is, the weight per shadow, and the cost per ounce. And then I put the cost of the palettes on the side. So um, obviously the premium individual shadows don't have a palette um, and you can just kind of do the math out if you want to figure out the the Nubian and the Nubian 2 or 12 shadows, and then the Masquerade would be 16. So you can see the Morphe 35 palettes are still less expensive than these Juvia Place. However, um, not by much on the original Nubian palette, but you are gonna get more in the Morphe palettes, but the quality cannot even be compared for me anyway. Um, Juvia's Place is much, much better and much, much better than the Violet Voss because again, uh, they're the same exact formula as the Morphe Premium Individual Shadows, not their regular shadows, their Premium Individual Shadows. They do have a different formula than their 35 pan palettes. I do have to say, um, I've been reaching for the Nubian 2 palette very often lately. Um, I love the look that I got today. I love that mixture again of like purple and oranges or berries and oranges. Um, so I've been using this palette a ton. Honestly, I'm like, this is the best $27 I've ever spent. Went through the ingredients and nothing in there causes me any cause for concern. They do all contain talc, which I will leave warnings um, below links that will tell you, some will tell you talc is safe, some will tell you it's dangerous. 
I always think that everybody should read up for themselves and make their own informed decision. I love the Viziart mats. Those are my number one ever favorite mats and their first ingredient is talc. It doesn't concern me. All of these palettes are cruelty free. They do not test on animals. So these are just made in China and exported here. I do like the packaging because it's nice and colorful and very thin. I just tried to take my magnet and pull these out to see if they pop out because I didn't think to do that before. And um, they don't come out like that easily. You probably could get a tool in there and dig it up, but I'm not gonna try to do that. So I don't hesitate to recommend these palettes based on my own personal customer service experience as well as the quality and performance of these eyeshadows. I think these palettes are great for someone that's looking to not spend $50 per palette. And even if you do, like if I spend $50, I've spent so much money on crap palettes. These are some of the best pre-made palettes that I have used in a very long time regardless of price. And you guys can see by those swatches how pigmented these shadows are. Um, even with brush swatches, they are really good. Okay, and now let's get into some of the drama or issues that you guys have asked me to touch on. So for me, the, the way that I handle things, and even in business, I'd rather just lay out everything good and bad that you hear because then you can kind of take on the bad and you know what you're getting yourself into, right? For me, it's set that expectation and then you won't be surprised. It's like if shipping is gonna take, you know, a week to go out, 10 days, tell people that and then they can't be shocked when it happens. So um, I kind of have that same philosophy with drama and things too. I think by burying your head in the sand and acting like these things didn't happen, it, it doesn't do anybody a service, you know? So I do wanna to touch on these things as you guys have requested too. Not to be like Jerry Springer, but just to kind of get them all out in the open. So um, there is a YouTuber by, by the name of Alyssa Ashley. She's a wonderfully talented artist that is actually, I believe, up from the Bay Area herself. She was working with Juvia's Place, um, I think when they first came out from my understanding. And they were sending her palettes and that she was doing videos for them. Um, and in her video, Per her own words it has now been removed she said that she didn't charge them what she normally charges brands for videos because she believed in the brand and wanted to help them um so she negotiated down some pricing and and so on so it appears that what it was is that she had the first two palettes and she was waiting for the new masquerade palette to be sent to her and the owner of the company said that she would send it to her and she kept like emailing or she kept texting her and asking her like, hey, you know, I'm waiting to do looks for you guys and help you out, but you haven't sent me the palette. My viewers are asking where it is and she saw that other influencers were getting it and it seems like the owner of the brand was just overwhelmed. And so she replied back. She just said, stay blessed or something like that. And then the YouTuber went back and said like her feelings were hurt, which again, I, I, I understand, but um, she kind of like kept, kept going on about the subject and so they went back and forth for a little bit on the owner basically said like well fuck off <laughs> kind of thing and you know that ruffled a lot of people's feathers and again youtubers have very loyal um viewers and fans and so people took that really as you know well Alyssa helped build up this brand when they were nobody and then once they started getting more play that the brand just kind of dropped her I, I don't agree with that. As someone that works as a manufacturer producing products, I work with Ardell. We would send eyelashes and things to influencers so they would use them in their looks and tag them in the looks. And people can be very demanding. They think that something's owed to them. Like, you'd be nothing without me. It's like, mm, no. But I also think it's when you're a startup brand, every one of these things costs you money. You know, so you're a small brand, you're not necessarily doing this full time, and these palettes and the production and then the shipping to get it to you, it's like maybe they only have 10 palettes that they send out. So maybe they're trying to rotate between, you know, well, this month we're going to do all anybody that's like an NC40 skin tone. And then the next month we're going to, you know, maybe they were just trying to mix it up and send different palettes. I don't know. Um, you know, some people are like, well, that's not professional. Well, I can tell you, I tell people to fuck off at least once a day, so... Then again, I'm not a brand selling anything, but I can tell you that when people keep up on some stuff, it gets exhausting and annoying. Um, and I did see another girl's video touching on that and why she wouldn't do business with them because again, she didn't get 
um, goods that she wasn't put on their PR list um, when she started doing like some website stuff for them, which she admitted in her video that she wanted to go out and do on her own, that the brand never asked her to do it. On and on. Um, I can tell you, I paid for my products. I got good service. I know a couple of you have commented on my Instagram that you are paying customers as well and it took like five days to get shipping notification and you didn't get a notification for your other one and I did hear there have been a few issues. What I can tell you is every single brand has issues. I've had issues with Sephora, I've had issues with Mac, I've had issues with Urban Decay. Um, to me what counts is how they rectify that issue. And again, it's a gamble that you take when you order with an indie brand. You do have to take into account you're not going to get Nordstrom or Neiman Marcus service when the price point of these is, you know, in the $20 range. And not saying that that's an excuse that someone can give you bad service. I haven't experienced a bad service. I can only go based on what you guys tell me. And, and who knows if that information is all completely truthful or if they're people that are like defending who they think was wronged and you know, I, I just don't know. I only want to base things based on facts and what I can prove and what I've experienced. And in the interest of full disclosure, I do want to tell you that when I posted my mini review on these on Instagram, the owner of the company did direct message me and thank me for giving her brand a shot and purchasing and supporting her company. I did let her know, well, just so you know, um, I'm going to be doing my review and I always talk about this, that there has been some concerns raised about customer service. And she did let me know that they are in the process of expanding. They have a new customer service department. They've now hired people, if you see on their Instagram, that are replying to a lot of comments. You know, social media is awesome. I think a lot of people try to take their problems on social media though, like, hey, I didn't get my package. No one's answering me. I think those things are best handled directly with customer service because I only get my last hundred notifications. So if someone's tagging me or liking a picture, those notifications get pushed all the way out. So unless you open every single picture and scroll all the way down and read every comment, things get lost. And you know, Stephanie blank my last name isn't my SF, you know, Steph handle. So it makes things difficult. I'm just saying I'm always willing to give new independent brands a chance. I am definitely more understanding for indie brands than I am for like a giant corporation that have unlimited funds. Maybe you're not. That's a decision that you have to make for yourself. The palettes were $50 and people were blowing me off. I'd, I'd have way more of a problem. You know, my irritation level rises as the price tag rises. Uh, but just be made aware, they do have those warnings now on their site. And I do see that they are telling people to email um, customer support if they've had any issues. So basically to sum it up, while I think Alyssa is a wonderful artist, um, I, I don't feel I don't feel like Juvia's place was in the wrong in that situation. And I do understand the situation from the vlogger side as well as the manufacturer side. Like I get how it is. I see how demanding people can be like, I want this, send me this. It's like, if you really truly want to support a brand and you're saying you were waiting to do a video for it, buy the palette spend the $20 on the palette and buy it and show your support and then do the looks with it, you know? Or just tell your viewers, I'm not gonna do it. I, I just didn't think the situation was necessarily fair. And then the video that came out, I don't I don't know. I, I just, I understand that her feelings are hurt and for that I am sorry. Um, I'm not as sensitive for stuff like that. If you can't tell by my resting bitch face, that stuff doesn't bother me. When I want something, I go and buy it. Never in my life have I ever told a brand like, hey, can you send this to me? It's like, I would just rather buy it myself. And I know some of these viewers, you know, Keep in mind, I know as well what we make per video based on views. Um, I know $20 for a palette, you know, plus the shipping and handling, bringing it in under $30. That wouldn't have been a stretch and you'd more than make up for that on a video alone. That's just my feelings on it. Um, I do really admire the fact that she has so many diehard fans that so many people were up in arms about this. Um, it just kind of is what it is. If someone, you know, if the situation had been that the owner of the company was like, listen here, you trashy bitch or something like that, I'd be like, I'd have a problem then. But when someone's just responding like, stay blessed and blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, you know what, fuck this. <laughs> I, I get it. There was also an incident prior to this um, where a giveaway winner um, 
had not got her palette. I guess it was just like, again, it wasn't a paying customer. I'm not saying it's right. Those were the two um, like free product things that I saw. Um, I'm not sure if that situation eventually got sorted out, but yeah, I wouldn't be me if I don't talk about this. It doesn't dissuade me from buying these products. Um, and then I did see one more video that someone um, in shipping got one cracked eyeshadow and she waited for a while and had to recontact them to get the replacement. But to the best of my knowledge, I think that was a year ago maybe a little longer, I don't know. I just wanted to make you guys fully aware of everything I've heard so you can make your own informed decision whether you wanna support this brand or not. I don't hesitate to recommend them. I think their products are not only great for the cost, they're good in general. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and I will see you next time.